Hello you absolute legends. Syndicate is one of the most successful and well-known personalities in the history of online gaming. On YouTube, he boasts well over 10 million subscribers throughout his channels. And on Twitch, he holds a Guinness World Record for the first person to reach 1 million followers. Nowadays, his online presence isn't quite so large, but a decade ago, he was gigantic. Back in the early days, Syndicate built his channel through Let's Plays and funny clips of various games, including Halo, Fallout, and Modern Warfare. But one of the games that really helped Syndicate pop off in the beginning was Black Ops Zombies. Syndicate uploaded Black Ops Zombies videos of all different types, but one that did really well and one that he was most well known for was a series of videos released in late 2011. This series chronicled Syndicate's game on the first map, Kino de Toten, the game where he reached all the way to round 116, which was a world record at the time. This run garnered massive attention with the final video amassing over 14 million views, and is his third most popular video of all time. This video is responsible for many people getting interested in zombies, and was an amazing accomplishment when it happened. The only issue with this run, however, is that it's fake. Syndicate used commands to cheat his way through this run, and acted as if it was legitimate. This would go unnoticed for a full 10 years, until Who Needs Jug uploaded a video explaining why he thought the run was fake. Once the first video dropped, more videos were released with even more evidence, essentially making this one a done deal. However, despite this, Syndicate defenders still cling on to hope and refuse to accept that Syndicate just might be capable of lying. And even Syndicate himself when pressed on this issue wouldn't admit it, and still claims to this day it's legit. In this video, I will take you through some of the evidence and explain why I believe Syndicate lied and cheated his way through the most famous zombies record of all time. I really hope you enjoy. Seasons greetings legends, in this video I've partnered with Displate who offers sleek metal posters that look amazing. I think if you're passionate about something, if you cherish something, posters are a fantastic thing to have. Personally, I am a gigantic nerd, and video games are my greatest passion, so I like to surround myself with them, and when I have posters of my favorite games on my walls, I can feel the positive energy. Displate works with the biggest brands in media, including all of your favorite game, film, and TV franchises. I mean, if you just browse these designs, you can immediately tell they look fantastic. If you are curious about some of my favorites, I've created a few collections for you to check out. You can see if you have the same taste as me. Displace display's metal design looks good and is super easy to install. Plus, with the magnet mounting system, you can quickly swap and change displays anytime. Displays are very affordable and are delivered anywhere in only four to five days. Displate is also helping to spread the Christmas cheer with a really great offer. Just click my link or use my discount code Carl and you'll receive up to 33% off. We hope you have an amazing holiday and if you want to get something nice for yourself or someone else, just click the link in the description and grab yourself a displate. Over a span of two weeks beginning in late October 2011, Syndicate released 11 videos showcasing highlights of his run up to round 116 on the Black Ops Zombies first map Kino de Toten. Needless to say, these videos don't show the entire run, which wasn't a requirement until recently, as getting up to rounds this high takes tens of hours, and especially back then, asking someone to upload the full run was unreasonable. If anything, the amount of footage Syndicate did upload was more than most, which ultimately helps us to analyze it to check for inconsistencies. The first video he uploaded was during round 68. This video is only a minute long, and just shows him reaching round 69. There really isn't much to it. The title indicates that this is just a sneak peek, indicating that it's a preview of something greater to come, which I want you to keep in mind. In the description, Syndicate explains why he doesn't have the Mule Kick perk. There are five perks available on this map, and you can hold up to four at any one time. Mule Kick is a perk that lets you hold three weapons. However, when you die, you lose all of your perks, including the weapon that was in your third weapon slot. In this case, Syndicate was holding the Thunder Gun in this slot, which is the best gun and the one he was relying on to get through rounds. Another perk is called Quick Revive, which you can get three times. Quick Revive is self-explanatory. When you die, you revive. However, without your perks, as I just mentioned. So Syndicate is explaining that at some point he died, was forced to revive, and chose not to use Mule Kick again in case he lost the Thunder Gun again. This description is really important, because in the next video, uploaded on the very same day, now on round 71, Syndicate repeats this explanation. And just to avoid confusion, the word down is referring to a death. So saying that you had a down is just another way of saying that you were killed. Because I've just been really avoiding stupid downs, but the only stupid down I've had 
was at round 27 and that's when I had mule kick now everyone's been like why no mule kick and the reason for no mule kick is simply because I had it but I got the mule kick and then I got the thunder gun so the thunder gun was in my mule kick slot which is an absolutely idiotic move I just completely forgot about losing it I just didn't think I'd go down to be honest I got a bit overconfident so clearly these two videos are supposed to be the same game. Both videos don't have mule kick, they have all of the perks in the same order, both videos feature the exact same explanation as to why, and both videos are uploaded literally on the same day. And not only that, Syndicate is responding to comments on the round 68 video and is explaining it as if it were the same game. But the only stupid down I've had was at round 27 and that's when I had mule kick. Now everyone's been like, why no mule kick? However, we know for a fact these are two completely different games that have been spliced together. Every time you start up a new game, you are randomly assigned one of four characters, and we can tell which character you are by either your speech or your hand model. Syndicate had his character speech turned off, but we can still see his hands to know exactly which character he is playing. On his round 68 video, we can see that he is playing as the character Nikolai, but in the very next video, round 71, he is now playing as Takio. It's important to note that it's impossible to change characters mid-run, so these videos are definitely from completely different games. When confronted with this, Syndicate's excuse is quite frankly amazing. According to Syndicate, sometime after he uploaded his round 68 video, his game crashed, so he had to start a brand new game. Then, when he got back past his previous run, he pretended it was the same run. He did this for literally no reason, and didn't even mention it at the time. Despite legitimately getting up to the same round again, he felt the need to lie and tell the same story about being downed and losing Mule Kick. Even though, as we'll discuss later, this didn't even apply to his current game. It doesn't make any logical sense, and quite frankly, it's basically impossible for this story to be true. As I mentioned before, both of these videos were uploaded on the same day, and not only that, even more videos afterwards were still on the very same day, all the way up to round 81. In order to reach rounds this high, it takes many, many hours. On his round 68 video, he explains it took him 6 hours to get there. So in order for his story to be true, this is what would have needed to have happened. He played for 6 hours to reach round 69, then he stopped playing to upload that video. Then he continued playing for some unspecified amount of time until his game crashed. After that, he uploaded a Minecraft video before starting a brand new game of zombies. Then he got up to round 81 again and uploaded all of those videos within that same day. However, getting to round 81 would take many hours. In fact, in his description on his round 81 video, he says he'd already put 30 hours into that game. And another crazy thing about this new game was the amount of points he had, which was around half a million by round 71. And in the round 68 video, he only had a bit over 200. So it wasn't just that he had to get to a much higher round, he had to get more than double the amount of points, which would have taken many, many more hours to do. Basically, there's only so many hours in a day, and even if Syndicate did use a time machine to grind 36 hours in a single day, you'd think this would be something he would mention, and you would think that a game crashing 6 hours in would also be something he would mention too. Apparently he is just pretending these two games are the same game for absolutely no reason. Ultimately, he is just lying about about what happened. All of these videos were already recorded by the time he uploaded his very first one, and they were all supposed to be the same game. In round 81, he dies for the second time, and we know it's for the second time because he says it is. <gasps> no! No! Oh my god, my second down. You have got to be shitting me. Immediately after reviving, he goes to buy the Quick Revive perk again. However, at this point in time, the Quick Revive should disappear, because you can only buy Quick Revive three times. You buy it immediately upon starting the game, immediately after your first death, and then once more immediately after your second death at which time it takes off and you can't buy it again. However, after dying for the second time and buying Quick Revive for the third time, it remains and we can see it's still there a bit later on. Because Syndicate has spliced two runs together, he has ended up with more Quick Revives than what should be possible. The YouTuber Russian, who made a video about Syndicate's run and believes he didn't cheat, says that Syndicate simply misspoke when saying this was his second death, and it was really supposed to be his first. 
And this is when on round 81, after taking it down, he says, and I quote, that's my second down. And when he buys a quick revive again, the machine doesn't disappear. A lot of people see that as clear evidence of him modding in some way, shape, or form, but I think what happened here is that he's live commentating on his best round ever after taking it down, and he most likely misspoke. It happens to me when I've got a script right in front of me, so it definitely happens to Tom when you add in all these other factors. However, this completely ignores the fact that on round 71, Syndicate went on an entire rant and told a very specific story about how he definitely died earlier in the run, even giving the exact round it happened, which is why he didn't have the mule kick perk. But the only stupid down I've had was at round 27, and that's when I had mule kick. Now everyone's been like, why no mule kick? And the reason for no mule kick is simply because I had it, but I got the mule kick and then I got the thunder gun. So the thunder gun was in my mule kick slot, which is an absolutely idiotic move. I just completely forgot about losing it. I just didn't think I'd go down, to be honest. I got a bit overconfident. <gasps> no! No! Oh my god, my second down. You have got to be shitting me. I'm sorry, but creating an elaborate fairy tale, explaining very specific details that apply to this exact run, and then corroborating that fairy tale later on by saying that you have indeed died twice, isn't misspeaking. That's just called lying. One interesting thing some people say is that maybe he just modded his way back to round 71 because his game crashed. But other than that, it's legit. Even Russian, and I'm sorry to pick on him once again, says, I think he modded back to 71, but the rest was legit. However, this is just flat out wrong. Even if the rules stated you were allowed to cheat your way back to round 71, which they don't, in Syndicate's case, he ended up giving himself an extra life. He died once on his way to round 69, confirmed by his description and commentary. He died once again in round 81, which we can see on video. Then at some point between rounds 85 and 98, he is downed for a third time. We know this because his perk order changes and also quick revive disappears, indicating that he bought it once again. Then between rounds 105 and 110, he dies for a fourth time. And we can tell because he completely loses his quick revive perk. So in total, he gets one extra quick revive and then therefore one full extra life. Normally you can only revive three times, but in this game he revives four times. It really doesn't matter how you spin it, he cheated. A reasonable theory to have is that Syndicate did legitimately get to round 69 before either dying or his game crashed. The end of the legitimate game is probably the footage he uploaded first. Beyond that, he decided to cheat by modding his way through to the later rounds. And there is substantial circumstantial evidence to support this theory. Mind you, this circumstantial evidence doesn't prove he cheated, we have already done that. All this extra evidence does is try to explain how he cheated. The first piece of evidence is that in in his later rounds, it shows that he has not purchased any of the wall weapons that are normally purchased at the very early stages. When you begin the game, you only have a pistol, and generally, one of the first things you do is buy a better weapon off the wall in the starting room, or in an adjacent room. You can tell if a weapon has been purchased before because it will pop out of the wall. In Syndicate's later rounds, he hasn't done this, which makes sense if he just skipped the early rounds. These starting weapons are essentially useless later on, so if you do skip the early rounds, it makes sense they are never bought again. When Who Needs Jug brought this up in his original Exposed video, people claimed this isn't suspicious because they themselves don't buy these starting guns, which might be a reasonable defense. However, we know this isn't the case with Syndicate. In his Round 68 video, we actually do see one of these starting room guns, and we can clearly see that it had been purchased. So purchasing this starting weapon was part of his strategy. It makes absolutely no sense for it not to have been purchased when we see it in his later rounds, unless of course he skipped the early rounds completely. Another interesting tidbit is about the Thunder Gun, which is one of the most powerful guns and the gun that Syndicate relied upon for his strategy. You get the Thunder Gun by opening the Mystery Box, but there is only a small chance of acquiring it every attempt. And every time you open the box, it costs 950 points. One of the videos in Syndicate's series is called The Most Expensive Thunder Gun Ever, 300,000 points, meaning that he opened the Mystery Box hundreds of times to get the gun once. And Syndicate starts recording recording again just after he gets it during round 76. Ladies and gentlemen, 350,000 points and a thunder gun. Oh yeah, baby, back in the game. 
Notice that he has 2 ammo in his magazine and 10 ammo in reserve. When you pick up the Thunder Gun from the Mystery Box, you always have 2 bullets in your magazine and 12 in reserve, which you see when he gets the Thunder Gun during round 84. However, when you just give yourself a Thunder Gun via commands, you have 2 ammo in your magazine and 10 in reserve. So there are two possible scenarios here. The first is that Syndicate finally picked up the Thunder Gun, then waited some undisclosed amount of time, during which he happened to fire exactly two bullets, then started recording and acted excited about just picking up the Thunder Gun. Or he just gave himself a Thunder Gun with commands. Another interesting thing to note about the Thunder Gun is that ammo is very scarce, and Syndicate acknowledges this multiple times throughout his run, stressing how important it is that he needs to try and kill 24 zombies zombies with each shot. I'm gonna hopefully try and get this round destroyed with this thunder gun. I've got to try and take out like all 24 with it each time. But then he goes ahead and uses the thunder gun to kill only one or two zombies at a time, and he does this many times throughout his run. He simply doesn't care about conserving ammo, which doesn't seem to make sense. However, again, this is clearly not a big concern if he is just giving himself thunder guns. There is also a ton of evidence centered around his gameplay and decision making, which basically boils down to he's not good and he has no idea what he's doing. Though I'm not a zombies player, so I can't really comment. If you want to know more about Syndicate's bizarre gameplay choices, you can watch videos by Who Needs Jug or Fleur. Ultimately, Syndicate's zombies run is cheated. It consists of various different games spliced together, and he almost certainly used commands to give himself weapons, points, and to help him progress through rounds. He then recorded commentary where he lied multiple times about what happened during his game in order to make it more believable. Nine years later, he was still lying about his cheated run and trying to profit from it. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been nine years. Nine years and probably like a week to the day that I got to round 115, aka the famous 116 run that I did in Call of Duty Zombies way back in the day. Now you might be like, oh, why? What's going on here? Are you going to redo it? Are you going to go back all that way? And the answer is hell no, because that was one of the most insanely mind-numbing things I have ever done. However, there was a remastered version of Kino de Toten in Black Ops 3 Chronicles. So I decided to pay homage nine years later, we're going to get to round 115 again. Now I know everyone's going to be like, you probably used the powerful gobble gums and all this and all that. And the answer is yes. Yes, I did. Because I didn't want to spend three days and my mind going numb doing it again. Then in 2021, when he was called out for cheating, he lied again and made up some brand new ridiculous story. I mean, come on, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal if Syndicate faked a run back in 2011 in order to grow his YouTube channel. He was young, and young people can do dumb things. But to keep the lie going for over a decade, even when he's much older and even when the proof is there, is pretty insane. I guess what I'm trying to say is just admit it. I assumed after Syndicate was charged by the FTC for deceptively promoting promoting his CSGO gambling website in 2017, that he may have learned his lesson and became a more honest person. But unfortunately, it seems like this isn't the case. I guess some people just don't change. A big thanks to Krups for helping me learn about Black Ops Zombies and Syndicate's run. Please go and show him some love by checking out his YouTube channel. I'll throw a link in the description to one of his more popular videos, going over even more examples of cheating in Zombies. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.